Um, we're now working on the cranium. Can you explain um, what points we're doing on the cranium and why we're doing them, and basically the full process? Yes, so we're working gradually deeper. Just as the spine has to be cleared to get rid of the root cause of the problems in the body, we find that all cranial scoliosis accompanies and precedes the spinal scoliosis, which means before the spine goes, the cranial goes first. It's the first thing to respond to your thought patterns. Right. So you get small distortions of the skull, that's perhaps the rest of the body. So the deepest root of all the patterns is going to come out when you get to the head. So basically we have these thoughts and it affects our head first of all, yep. then it goes down the spine and out the to the body. body. But we have to release them in the verse. Yes. Okay. So we're, we're holding different points on, on, on the head. The first one's like behind the ear. Mm -hmm. What's that point doing? Because it's changing the shape of our head. It is. Because when we're pushing the temporal bone, you're actually unlocking what's called the supramosal suture, which mm -hmm. locks it in place. When that's decalcified again, and the bone's free to move, the head can return to its perfect configuration. And what does that help with? Once the head is in its perfect configuration, it's a powerful amplifier. It amplifies the power of your thought projection up to 10,000 times. Because we're going to do another one, uh, the triple axis. Yes, that's going to be inside the jaw. Okay, and what's that doing? This is unlocks the next set of bones. So you, you first unlock the temporal bone. When you work inside the jaw, you have to go to unlock the smaller bones around the head, which have most insertions. When that is unlocked, then all the rest of the bones will go at once. And the head's been completed, so we arrange it. And you also mentioned something about a psychic bone, um, that we have a, a bone that's basically hardly getting used in our head, that allows us psychic powers. Yes. What under is the that? Ambulus, there's a tiny little bone inside the jaw called the pterygoid plate, with a small antenna underneath known as the ambulus. Mm -hmm. Most people, this is damaged. When you restructure that, it acts the antenna. This is what we need to actually pick up the psychic messages. So basically, it makes us more intuitive yeah. and more in touch with the feminine side, exactly. what we were talking about yesterday. So, this it is a practical way to get that. Needs to work. Mm -hmm. um, in in uh, one of your articles, you talk about different templates. For instance, you talk about those veils. Oh, yes, the veil the of place. genes and hormones. Like, what, what do you mean by that? Basically, as a template, is call it a template simply because there's like certain holes which the neurocompetitors have to fit into for it to register. If something doesn't fit the template in your brain, it doesn't register. So the, your temporal lobes so actually filter off a lot of the experiences according to your, your, your belief structure. Your belief structure? Yeah. Right. That way you won't actually see everything that's there. So but we're walking around kind of blind to a lot of things then because yeah. these veils are covering them up. A good example was the Magellan ships when the ships landed and the, and the natives on the island would you see the ships, they couldn't actually see them. It's all people walking out the sea, couldn't see the ships because they were conditioned to do so. Yeah. This is a good example of how your mind builds up things that are part of its belief system. Right. So basically, if our minds were totally clear, we could see into other dimensions and yes, stuff like exactly. that. And we could walk through walls. And well, not necessarily walk through walls, but at least you can see everything. Right, okay. <laughs> So there's other, there's other veils, what do you mean by the social veil, veil of ego, is it worth going to... What happens, the first veil is determined by your genes and your hormones. It's not because your genes have their own agenda, they want to find a new host, you know, so carry on the species. And of course, as far as they're concerned, when you've got a new host, you can die, they don't need you anymore. Right. So they can kind of affect your behaviour to reproduce. Uh -huh. So in women they might want to make them have children, and they might actually give them a queer and everything else they want to become a mother, and everyone can take away from their own will. With men, they might want to sow the seed of birth as well as become very competitive to be the dominating one. Uh -huh. And this actually takes away from spiritual principles. Um, so, can you, can you, so, the veil of genes makes us do that unconsciously, is that what you're saying? Yeah. You okay. need to measure everything from that perspective. You're always measuring, the, the, see, the men with that, right. with that male is strong, they're always trying to be the top, you know, uh -huh. the leader, yeah. basically, the leader of the pack. Right. Therefore, they're measuring everything in this competitive way, so he's the strongest. Uh -huh. And even the business about having the biggest desk, the biggest car, whatever, you know, it's like, oh, they right. want to have the most, and then everything is measured this way. You're not actually seeing truth at that point, because everything is measured through this one data. Ah, okay. And what about the social veil? How does that process work? Well, basically, once you form a society, it's there to keep um, people safe from chaos. What that means, then, is that once that is formed, the society will maintain itself at their expense. It'll keep them safe from chaos, yes. But not that chaos is good because it means it's, taking, it's also taking away the creativity. People then become stuck in the system and do obey its rules, mm. irrespective of what's good for the individuals now. So basically we're all living our lives just now then, a lot of people, and we're all doing the jobs and we all think that's serving society. But in reality, we're not yeah. observing society correctly. And we, well, and then that has been distorted, so underneath society there's something real. And that's, we have this instinct for society, which is based upon the social model, on the first veil, the genetic one. So because once you have a leader, people and in a social society 
will actually listen to the leader rather than themselves. Right. So what this failure is doing is stopping from listening to yourself. Mm -hmm. it takes away individuality. Okay, right. And uh, what about the veil of ego? Again, ego is formed through this competition. When one person has to be the best, then people measure the people that stand and then ego gets very strong. Mm -hmm. Everybody's comparing who's the best, who's the worst, and so on. And actually seeing what's real. And what's real is we're all unique individual people with all... Everybody's got different skills. Uh -huh. They're really no better than us. Uh -huh. um, so the, the media can use that to manipulate people? But yes, it's often used as manipulation. Uh -huh. And the veil of power, what's that? What that means is that people have now based power on these standards. So it's about seeing who's the strongest and push everybody around. It means they measure power by impact or investments. The stronger person is pushing everybody around. And actually in magic that doesn't work at all. Mm -hmm. We need change if you want to work magic. Because in magic powers investments. Resonance, right. It means it's all about vibrations changing to okay. Like right now, this whole space is filled with all the love the goddess has for you, all the love your higher self has for you. Mm -hmm. Now your present resident determines how much of that love you can receive. Right. You can't force the goddess to love you more because you really love you totally. Uh -huh. So you can't force anything. If you change your resonance, it changes what you receive from the goddess. Right, so basically if you're trying to, man not manipulate, but you're trying to get a group of people to go a certain way, you try and be forceful with them and show your and power and lead them. Entirely. You want to use the magic resonance. You basically have to get in tune with them and uh, lead them by showing example. And what you actually discover is that what you're creating is nothing to do with other people. Right. You think you have to force those people to do something for you. But actually, if you simply receive the vibration of the goddess, you get everything you want. Ah. It might happen in a totally different, different way than what you expected, but this is how magic works. So sometimes people might do it by accident one time and then try it differently, and we really need to understand that concept then. It is about learning to receive partly, which means being vulnerable. Right, okay. See, when you're being forceful, you're not vulnerable. You have to be aware you have to be vulnerable. Okay. Um, unhappiness, what's the feel of unhappiness? It's actually a survival instinct to be unhappy. Because when you're happy, you're not in your body against danger. Okay. You might know sometimes, you might be look happy until somebody walks in who's going to ask you for something. You could be put in a miserable space so it doesn't ask you too much. <laughs> So people it's don't go around showing their happiness because more get may ask them. Yeah, they're getting used. They ah. see happiness as a weakness. Therefore, for survival, people stay miserable to survive. And they always tell each other their woes. Yeah. So don't burden me anymore. I've got enough exactly. on my plate. That way, you know, it's hard to create happiness if there's at least a lot to be happy. Yeah. So people really need to learn to be happy, but keep their own. If they want to do something, do it. If they don't, they well, you've got to realise is you can be happy and still say no. Uh huh. Okay. Which would be, make a better world for a start. Because <laughs> you might say yes now and again when, when, the, when the moment's right. Well, suits you. Mm -hmm. And of course sometimes you want to say yes, but uh -huh. you don't let me manipulate you. Yeah. But you have to be, know yourself fully, I suppose, you know, not to get abused. Um, what, what's um, the veil of the past? Well, what happens when you've got to this point through the other veils, you end up believing that the past is cause. When you're in the, in the kind of measurement of power as impact, it's like the Newtonian physics, like billiard balls, with one knocks the other in place, and, it, and there's a, this kind of line of future causality where past leads to present or future. But magic that doesn't work. As I said, it's like everything in our minds is geared towards the future. The future motivates us. Mm -hmm. Causes in the past, but the causes in the, is in the future, not the past. Uh -huh. But this veil causes people to believe that causes in the past, that's why they can't work magic. Okay. And the veil of addictions? What happens when the, the addiction is like this final point in a way? When all those veils are in place, you then begin to form addictions. Most addictions are either to the past or to being special. One of those makes them ego. Mm -hmm. These are actually the roots of all addictions. Okay. Um, now, in, in your article again, you talk about the third eye and awakening your third eye. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by a third eye? Is that the pineal gland? Well, the gland is, is seen as a physical representation of it. Obviously, okay. if people look at a spiritual thing here right. in the astral body, we have various chakras. Mm -hmm. The third eye is what we call the Ajna chakra, which is in the forehead. It mm -hmm. gives you your, all your clairvoyance, your intuition, your psychic abilities. Mm -hmm. So, how do you go about awakening that? Through this whole process, as we play different blockages, it wakes naturally. So, we're going to get to the stage at the end, the third eye is going to feel awakened. Exactly. As we clear the whole cranium, the head rearranges itself, okay. the intuition is functioning, your power is functioning. Mm -hmm. And what about the crown chakra? What's that? And That's your link to, to God, basically. Okay. Is that, that to... It's really open, you, you feel the intimacy with the Creator. When you say God, do you mean your own higher self, or...? Well, your higher self is, is only one step in the way. Right. I'm talking about a universal principle of, of, of the one source of everything, which uh -huh. we're all a part of. 
Okay. And when the crown is opening more aware of that, I've linked to that, so you can actually experience yourself as in a point of oneness. One minute.